he'd run her over and was taking his twisted frustration out on her while she was dying. Dogs, our most faithful companions, they give unconditional love and loyalty. We feel responsible to speak for those that can't speak for themselves, and sometimes words can't sufficiently tell the pain we feel after somebody did our dog wrong, so some resort to vengeful acts like nuclear revenge. Grab your furry friend and enjoy. A story about a bully that eats a dog but ends his own life consequently, neighbors stealing a dog, get their kids stolen. Followed up by a dog killer losing what he loves most himself in the last story, about a tyrant kid who throws a big rock at a dog to harm him, but ends up being harmed the most himself. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I have three dogs, Tiki, Scruffy, and Bailey, which my family has rescued from the streets and uncaring neighbors who couldn't care if the animal died. I also have two cats, Halo and Snowflake, both of which I adopted from the SPCA. I have Tourette's, Ad and OCD, and the ticks from my Tourette's made me a prime target for bullying. At that point in my life I was the shy weird kid in the class that never spoke, I had no friends and my companions were the only reason I woke up in the morning. One kid named Andrew, his real name cuz frick him, loved to feel strong so he picked on me. He beat me up, made me feel like trash and hyped other trash human beings to bully me. In general I'm a patient little bastard and very vengeful. One day my mom brought one of my dogs, Tiki, to school so we could take her to the vet without driving back home because the closest vet was 50 kilometers away and Tiki needed a heart scan. My mom needed the toilet so she left Tiki with me, straight after she left Andrew and two of his goons show up. Andrew started saying, what's this spaz, got a new toy for us to play with? I replied, Andrew please she's very sick. I'm begging you please leave her alone. Andrew, oh but where's the fun in that? He then proceeds to then pick Tiki up and toss her to his friends. Tiki had surgery and steel bars placed on a few of her bones, so it hurts her a lot if you don't pick her up properly. Because of the pain she is in she snaps at Andrew and bites his hand. Andrew yelled that the dog is a little shit and she needs to learn respect. Andrew then proceeds to throw Tiki a solid 5 meters where she hits the ground on her side. I begin to scream and my mom starts to run from the bathroom after hearing my scream. Andrew and his gang then run, laughing. My mom and I scoop Tiki up who's wheezing and bleeding from her mouth and take her to the vet while I tell my mom what happened on the way there. Tiki ended up passing away because of brain hemorrhaging from the blunt trauma. Scruffy waited at the front door of my house for two days waiting for Tiki to come home. Waiting. I tried to tell the staff what happened but Andrew was the popular kid and his parents were very close friends with the principal, so nothing was done to get justice. This whole ordeal caused me to become immensely depressed but in the end I was left a festering vessel of rage. No more quiet shy kid, no more little weak boy, no more. I devised a plan. I went to the gym for every morning at 4.30, then I would get dressed and go to school. This boosted my self-confidence and I soon gained a few friends who are still my friends to this day. I became a teacher's pet, I made the whole school think I was a loyal goody two-shoes teacher's pet, all according to plan. After three years I was seen by the staff as the epitome of a good and innocent student. No one would suspect me to harm anyone else. Andrew had a scholarship to my school for playing sports and it was his passion in life, would be a shame if someone were to end that. I told some people who I knew would take action, what he did to my dog and how I knew some people that would pay generously for the service. Next week everyone is chatting in class. You hear what happened to Andrew, yeah I heard someone mugged him and bust up his leg. A comminuted leg bone was what was left. The assailant smashed Andrew's leg with a hammer so many times that the bone broke into more than five pieces. The leg was unsalvageable and had to be amputated. Bye bye scholarship and all his favorite things to do in life. No one suspected me, the outgoing kind teacher's pet who never held grudges, yes, definitely not me. Andrew if you are reading this, I have just one thing to say, see you in Helfrick face. This happened when I was around 12-13, 7 years ago, 
so the details might be a little skewed. Most of my childhood the house right next to ours has been condemned and abandoned. The property owners were willing to sell the land for $200. That's how bad it was. My family didn't buy it because the land tax in our area is high. Eventually someone bought it and threw a manufactured home on it to replace the condemned home. Soon a nice old man moved in next door, and we didn't pay to close attention because he kept to himself. That was until his daughter moved in with him. Soon our quiet little neighborhood turned into an episode of white trash and trouble. The daughter would fight with her spouse about every little thing and keep my family and neighbors up half the night. Their kids were the worst part of all. We never knew how many kids lived in that house because so many different children and adults were in and out of there all the time. Me and my siblings tried to become friends with them because there are not too many kids our age in the town. We ended up being more of their babysitters, than just a friendly neighbor kid. They would come over to our house and each of my siblings had a group of three to four kids each to watch over. These kids would walk in uninvited into our house. While we would play with their sibling in the yard. Then steal toys and games from our rooms. They would either take it for themselves or throw it in our backyard river. They did that a lot if we made them mad for taking back our stuff. They would constantly run in and out of our house. Even if no one was with them. They would steal all of the fruit in the basket my mom left out for us. My mom didn't kick them out immediately, because she never wanted to deny a kid food if they need it. My mom confronted the parents about their behavior, and their three-year-old son called her a bitch. The parents refused to apologize for their behavior. Saying stuff like, if you loved it so much you wouldn't have let them take it or don't parent my kid. One thing they would specifically do to me, is pulling my hair all the time. I'm a tomboy, and they would just call me a boy in a wig because girls can't play with skateboards and girls can't play with ninja action figures or any other gender stereotype. They would constantly bombard me because they truly didn't know girls were allowed to play with anything they wanted. One of their heavier children stole my skateboard and jumped on it breaking it in half. Similar to that so no head vine. Then they said I shouldn't have been playing with one anyway. There are plenty more examples, but I think you get the point. The neighbors decided that because our house was nicer, that they had permission to run an electrical line from our backyard plugs to their house. Which in itself is a bad thing, but they decided to run off our electric bill to triple the cost of our original. We were lower middle class, below poverty level. So we couldn't afford that kind of bill. The rule in our house is if you're not using it, it is turned off. That's why my parents were awfully surprised to see an $800 electric bill. Eventually a person from our electric company came out to our house to see what was happening. They found an extension cord running to their house. The electrician simply unplug it, then warned the neighbors of the legal reasons why they can't do that. Then said that should be the end of that problem. My mom politely but sternly went to the neighbors to emphasize that this was not okay. The neighbor had a small adult tantrum about it and cussed my mom out, but eventually come back into her home to de-escalate the situation any further. Our neighbors tried one or two more times to run the line from our house to theirs. They would move it at night so we wouldn't see them move it. Each time when we unplugged it, they would cuss us out and send their kids over to destroy something else in our home. Eventually mom straight up told them she would call the police and press charges, if they or their come on our property again. We could still be friends with their kids, but they weren't allowed on our land. The neighbors decided that because we won't let them use our electricity. That the next best option was to steal our dog from the backyard, and claim our dog attacked our kids. Even though our dog was harmless and cowers at everything due to bad owners before us. I'm guessing because our dog liked to rip her tags off a lot, the neighbors could call in a stray dog attack their kids. The pound came and took our puppy away. By the time my brothers and I got home, she was already gone. We just assumed she ran off to our grandmothers who lived down the street. She would do this often because my grandma spoils her. When my parents came home, they about lost it, learning our dog was missing. We obviously, looked for her but couldn't find her. After two days, we found her at the dog pound. She was impounded. The officer said it was obvious that our dog didn't hurt their kids but they still had to take her in for an evaluation. 
my parents had to spend $200 to get her out. The pound told us why the dog was taken, and my mom had enough. It was time for revenge. When my mom got home, she sent my little brother over to their house to play with their kids. He was still friends with some of them at the time. My brother became a little spy that day. His job was to look around their house, and report anything that could be suspicious. We learned from him that they were sitting three kids to a twin bed. The entire house was cramped and dirty. The old man that lived there was hardly home because he couldn't stand his adult daughter that lived there, but he didn't want to evict her from the home and leave his grandkids homeless. All around the kids were being neglected. With the information my brother gathered my mom called Child Protective Services on the home. Within the month all of the children minus one, who the old man cared for, were removed from the home. While I agree the foster system is bad. It was definitely better than what they were going through in that house. The mother of the children started to fight with her father on everything. Because her kids were no longer there as a distraction. The old man was to be her next victim. The old man eventually was fed up with her and kicked her out of the home. All that was left in the home was the old man and the grandson he was fostering. They are both very kind and amazing neighbors. I had this cabin in the woods high up on the mountainside. When I bought the property, we were able to buy all the land near the cabin except for one parcel. The previous owner of the entire set of properties had a spoiled son who liked to get drunk and gamble away everything he earned. So we got all but one parcel. He managed to scrape up enough cash to get one parcel right below our cabin. His parcel was entirely surrounded by mine. There's a road going up and over the mountain that first passes by the cabin and continues on through his parcel finally ending at a pond below that. When he decided to build on the parcel I granted him an easement for power, water, and road access which I had my lawyer write up because I was busy in the city. I was trying to be a good neighbor. Throw him a bone. I only went up on weekends, so I didn't have too many problems. We managed just fine for a few years. I didn't like him much, but we kept to ourselves, though he had a weird habit of sneering at me when he drove by in his girlfriend's car. The police came out a few times because he was fighting with his girlfriend but he left me alone until one day during a particularly hot August. His girlfriend left him, but he wanted the tracks. He bought a new truck. He liked his new truck. He drove his new truck past my cabin all weekend long back and forth, non-stop. I was trying to get the last part of a rather difficult book finished and didn't need a Mario Andretti wannabe tearing up my peace of mind. But, it was a private road so any traffic problems had to be settled without the help of law enforcement. I had a sweet cocker spaniel named Mindy who stayed inside most of the time and only went outside to do her business. She was terrified of the big dodge as he went up and down the mountain throwing gravel any mud everywhere. When I went outside to tell him to stop, he flipped me off, called me a few special words and threatened to run me over if I didn't get out of his way. I just shook my head, and went inside, resolving to settle his problem with a lawyer, instead of fighting him. I didn't want to accidentally kill him. He wasn't a very big guy and all mouth anyways. I figured it was the liquor talking. So I walked Mindy and kept her inside that weekend. I had to wear headphones to tune out his act, while living in a cabin in the woods. He was pissed because I bought his father's land, despite the fact that his father left him enough money to buy it several times over. He told my solicitor all of this when he wrote up the easement. My lawyer informed me of this when I contacted him about the dangerous Dodge dirtbag. He continued driving up and down the mountain like a maniac for the next four weekends. He did not stop even in the dead of night. He just went on and on and won, and I locked my doors hoping he wasn't so deranged that he would set my cabin on fire. Fortunately, the second weekend my lawyer told me to get video and pictures if possible, but not to confront him. So I set up a camera and hunting camera by the corner of my house about 5 yards from the road. I have groceries delivered once a month to the cabin, by the local supermarket in town. The delivery person has instructions to leave the bags on the back porch. I didn't hear her knocking on the fifth weekend and so she let herself in and put the bags on the kitchen counter. While she was leaving Mindy slipped outside to do her business but couldn't get back in. I didn't hear her barking, 
but I did hear her yelps when the drunk bastard ran her over. I ran outside and he's standing over her cursing Mindy. He'd run her over and was taking his twisted frustration out on her while she was dying. So I shoved him away and scooped her up. I then raced into town to see the vet. By the time I got to town she was cold, and I knew it was too late. So I limped back home broken hearted and angry. I took Monday off and buried her beneath an old bay tree. On Tuesday, I took the footage and gave them to my lawyer. The pictures on the hunting camera were on film, so it took a couple days to get them developed, but the VCR tape told the whole story. He'd seen her beside the cabin and had veered off the road to run her down. The evil grin on red face looked demonic. I asked my lawyer if I could sue him. He said I could and we had plenty of evidence to cause him serious harm, but in the meantime he'd still be living there and things would only escalate. At the time, dogs were considered property and didn't have anything in the way of rights. Still don't, which is a pity. But I wanted a fight, and my lawyer knew that if he didn't throw me a bone I'd go back up that mountain and beat the dirtbag to death with his own wrenched off arm. My lawyer calmed me down and took out the lease agreement. In it was a standard maintenance clause. But there was also a stipulation in the easement that prohibited acts that might disturb the peace and harmony of the owner. It had a quit clause that automatically rescinded his easement should he persist in such acts for a month or more. My lawyer had sent him a letter to the effect the second week and didn't get a reply. The mail was registered and he had to sign for it in town at the post office. I had my lawyer serve him with a quit notice. In that state a notice to quit an easement doesn't have the same level of difficulty as a notice to quit tenancy, which can drag out for six months or more. If you are in violation of an easement rights and are ordered to quit it by the owner, you can appeal, but in the interim you must by law stay off the easement, and any utilities passing through can be cut off at the owner's pleasure unless doing so can cause a life-threatening situation. But I didn't cut off his water and power right away. We didn't start proceedings on the suit until later. He continued to drive on the road after the order to quit, only faster and with more profanity. I got it all on tape. I told him so, and he said he didn't care. He said ugly frick like me should just die. So I decided to stay away until the suit was initiated. So, a month later I had workers on the mountain put in a nice gate, solid construction in three feet of concrete. I could open and close it with a garage door opener. I had barbed wire fence around the whole property. So the only way in or out was via the gate. I had a pedestrian gate put in beside the road and left that unlocked. It was about a quarter mile to the cabin and half that again to his own place. A fairly long walk for a raging alcoholic. I got good pictures of him on the game camera that weekend. Dirtbag driving up to the gate in his big truck. Dirtbag trying to jimmy the lock. Dirtbag leaving and returning with a hacksaw to try to cut lock. Dirtbag leaving in frustration. Dirtbag returning with his truck. Dirtbag leaving again. Dirtbag ramming the gate uphill at full speed. Finally dirtbag through windshield laying on hood as smashed truck rolls back down the mountain. The gate didn't even bend. The truck sure did. He lived, still not as ugly as me, but we can't get everything we want. 20 odd shots and more than enough proof to show to the judge to get a protection order and since it was a small town, the same judge wasn't too pleasant with him when we took his last penny during the lawsuit. We even got his parcel in his flea-infested shack. We let him keep his busted-up dodge. I have a male Kelpie named Max. Max would often bark at strangers because he is protective. Max loved to go parks. Seeing him running around happily makes me smile. One day, me and my dad took Max to the park but we weren't alone. A bad kid I knew was there with his friends, let's call him Antonio. He was a scumbag bully. He likes to call me rude names like autistic moron because I have autism. My dad hated him too so we tried our best to avoid him, he noticed and does the most evilest thing I've seen in my life. He threw a big rock at my Max. He hit him and this causes Max to get knocked down, me and my dad were furious as we saw him and his friends laughing like psychopaths. We took Max to the vet, thankfully he was okay but he had one broken rib and Max had to have surgery. The doctor said to us that if the rock broke more ribs, the lungs could have collapsed and Max would have died. After being treated, 
Max is now scared and doesn't want to go to parks anymore, we then get a knock on the door. Dad checked who it was and it was the neighbor that lived across the park, he explained that Antonio dropped his phone and had recorded the whole thing. I went up to the man and said, I'll take it as evidence. And the man gave me the phone, but what I found was far worse than scarring my dog, he also took pictures of girls in the shower. And one of the girls was a friend of mine. He also pulled horrible pranks on homeless people. I went into Godzilla mode and I emailed it to the principal, his parents, and the police. Then I smashed his phone, luckily I emailed the whole montage. It was Monday and I was ready for one thing, not school, the result. As I enter school, Antonio and his friends often hung out in the halls, but they were nowhere to be found. I then overheard two guys talking, one of the guys said, guess what happened to that shithead Antonio. I stopped and decided to listen to the whole thing, him and his friends were expelled and arrested for animal cruelty and harassment, they were also banned from another school so their parents have to homeschool them, the rest got normal punishments but Antonio's was the worst. Apparently his laptop, pop funk collection, and his Nintendo Switch were destroyed by his mom and dad who were livid with him, forgot to mention that Antonio and his friends are also banned from going outside. But what about the phone you ask? Well, we were having lunch when Antonio's dad walked up to us and apologized about his son's actions, dad said it was fine and I said, he got himself into this but I forgave him too. But that didn't end here, I also gave Antonio's dad his son's now smashed phone, I told him, tell him that karma did this and he did just that. Although he refused to go to parks, Max was back to being happy. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give me some sugar by smashing the like button. Royal AI, would love to hear your experience or what you think of these stories in the comment section.